Good morning, everyone. Hello, Jonathan. How are you today? I am very good. Thank you, Grub. Awesome. Happy uh, meeting day. Happy meeting day, indeed. I'm surprised people aren't joining from uh, Seattle or other places. Good morning. Good morning, Eric. So people may, uh, maybe in Seattle, we don't know. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but if uh, anyone on the call could uh, sign in, that'd be great. Let me just share the notes. I know Andrew was having some travel issues coming back from vacation. So you mentioned that. Yeah. Yeah. I've got limited sympathy. I've got to. I've got to say, I mean, it uh, sounds like a phenomenal holiday. Yeah, I mean, I suppose if you're going to be stuck somewhere, uh, coming back from a cool holiday is not a bad way to do it. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. Hello, Dan. Hello, Victor. Howdy. Good morning. Welcome. Do you want to just uh, add your name to the uh, notes? We'll get kicked off in a couple of minutes. If anyone has any um, topics they'd like to discuss, if you just add to the uh, agenda. That'd be appreciated too. Give it one more minute and we will start. <laughs> Maybe next time we'll ask how uh, the uh, security event is and get people to do a bit of a readout of that. For those not currently in Seattle. All right, should we start? Um, any offers of a scribe? Much appreciated. Appreciative as always, Dan. No worries. Genuinely some of the worst, the, well, some of the best note taking I've, uh, I've, uh, I've seen to be fair. I think people do um, from uh, general feedback. They do go back in and um, and read read the notes, which is quite cool. So it is uh, it is used and useful. Thanks, that then. Uh, right, uh, next item. Any new friends? So a couple of people on here I don't recognize. Do you want if uh, if uh, you want to? Would you like to introduce yourself? Perhaps that would be the time. Uh, hi everyone. Um, my name is Leslie. Um, um, are you here? Yes, yep. I think I'm from Jakarta. That's all. All right. Welcome. Anyone else want to introduce themselves? Uh, I'll introduce myself. Uh, even though I introduced myself in the previous meeting, I was, I was, <laughs> I, 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 I also was in the the best uh, working group, uh, best practices working group uh, meeting. So um, I'm still Robert. Uh, I'm st I'm still from Norway, and I still do stuff with platform engineering, security, and and so on and so forth. Uh, so uh, nice to meet you. And uh, this is the third time that I tried to get into this particular <laughs> meeting, but uh, uh, you know, I'm really I'm really crappy with time zones. 
weirdly enough. Uh, <laughs> so it is what it is. But I'm here now. I'll try no my worries. best to show up every time. Well, on the well right welcome. Track. And it's glad that you're still there, Robert. Uh, and, and I'm not great at time zones either. So I, I've actually now put on our, um, if people need to take a look at it going forward, I've put on the top of our um, uh, end users uh, Slack channel, the link to Zoom and the times in multiple different time zones. Because I realized if I didn't do that, I was turning up like, or just panicking towards the end. So. It, it is it is definitely appreciated. And, and I, I, I mainly have had troubles uh, with like CNCF meetings. Uh, where some is updated in the calendar, some is not. Some is right. like verbally said that it's supposed to be this time, and then you have the the between summer and then you know yeah. the changing of the time zones, which is different than in North America compared to Europe. Yeah. So I can guarantee uh, we'll lose people during that. It happens every year. Yeah. Yep, I was gone for a couple of weeks because I couldn't adjust to stuff. So, I call it the time vortex. That's yeah. that seems about right. Indeed. All right. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, and, and welcome to the group. Welcome again. Uh, right. So in ways of updates, um, I'll give a few and, and uh, pass on to, to others. Uh, and then it'd be great if we had any other topics people wanted to, to table as well. Um, starting off with GitHub. So one of the things that we'd had as an action uh, the last session and the, the session before was to update the GitHub pages. And we had Jeff um did some phenomenal work on our uh, github pages so thank you very much uh thank you for that um you you had some feedback from uh, a couple of other people i think chipping into that is that right yep. yes i don't see anyone i think on this call but maybe not because it was github handles so anyone please speak up but yeah there's a bunch more to do too so i don't know if you want to point me to other things or if you want to send information i'm happy to to add edits like you know members and leadership and things like that yeah i, I think i think we need to right just to, just to bottom that out um if i take another look at it, i uh, i did look uh, when it came through it looked really good great start with the all the appropriate information on it but if we go down current work related activities um Maybe we should actually add some of the projects we're working on in that current work thing. I think that's that's reasonable, right? So, you know, we're going to go through it in a second. But there's the taxonomy work, there's the architecture work, um, there's the um, supply chain uh, repository work that we're putting together. So a couple of items there um, we can uh, we can add in. Um, maybe if we put that in the notes, I'll uh, I'll take a look and maybe if if it's alright with you, Jeff, work on that between now and next session. That'd be great. Yeah, sure thing. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look and I can copy whatever we, we talk about over. Thank you, man. Krobe, in terms of general good order and, um, you know, uh, how a working sh group uh, should have documentation in place, is there anything else that we need to do over and above the awesome work Jeff, Jeff put in on the GitHub page? The, the GitHub is a great start. That's the entry point for a lot of folks where they will yeah. kind of navigate in through the web page, through our Git repos. So that's a great place. And I love the idea of putting the uh, current projects that are incubating, getting those listed. And actually um, what I found is useful is if we are looking for collaboration on anything, state, you know, we're doing this taxonomy. We would love feedback on you know these areas. So maybe be prescriptive about how you would like to have help or where what areas you would like to help help focus new people to. Awesome. I mean, let's think about that, and we'll, we'll perhaps add to that um, over the next couple of weeks. What one other thing that I had thought about was with the working uh, sessions that we're having. Um, that, that we're having multiple different ad hoc meetings around the side. I wonder if we sort of publish that. Um, discuss it in this meeting and also publish that as a time on the community calendar. I would suggest that if, especially if they're regular, I would get them on there. You get more people join. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, Dan. You got a hand up. Oh, you're mute. Yeah, I was just thinking um, the uh, riffing on what Crow was saying about 
where we are where we are where we have work items where we're looking for people's feedback um <clears throat> that might having some issue templates or having an issue template might be a good idea as well so that um you know if we want people to raise issues um with us then we could at least say what's the thing you're raising the issue about you know mm -hmm. or um and i'm happy to work on an issue template um for the for the repo uh that so i'm i can take that action <coughs> i mean it just i don't feel like some sometimes uh you can have like when there are multiple work items in a particular repo sometimes it might make sense to have multiple issue templates so that when you open up a new issue you go you know, it first asks you are you opening up this kind of issue this kind of issue this i don't think we need to be that fancy right now but what we can do is simply have an issue template that says you know has like a pick list of the things that you're um what do you what do you, you, you what which work item are you opening up this issue on and then automatically sets the and a, a um a label of some kind yeah I, I think i can do that that'd be awesome i, I think it's a great idea very cool good idea and actioned uh and you're going to do the work as well i mean you could we ask for any more fantastic all right, great. Um, so moving on to the next one, the taxonomy work and taxonomy update. Um, so I can provide a bit of an update on that, but Henrik, you're on the call. Uh, do you want to give a bit of an update on the conversations we've been having with Andy and Justin? Uh, yes, I can do this, but uh, as, as you like, don't have any preference if you go first or I go later, just make. No, nope, no, nope, go for it. You, you start, I'll, I'll fill in. Okay. Um, so I think the the biggest discussion point was again mostly and please disagree or correct if i got it wrong about the scope of the taxonomy which kind of attacks are in and out and uh, what we were we had one work meeting let's say uh, i think that took place two weeks ago if i'm mistaken or, or one or time flies and with justin and andy from control uh Plain, I think is the, the, the company's name. Yep. And um, Andy and a colleague, they were going through another list of supply chain attacks, trying to map those to the different attack vectors of the taxonomy. And we were basically going through that list and commented on whether the assignment they did was correct or not in our understanding. Um, and again, as I said at the very beginning, it boiled down to defining better the scope what is in and one maybe takeaway there were a couple of cases where software organizations were attacked where their credentials were stolen or maybe where their ip was stolen or kind of just deleted compromised in some or the other way but there was no impact on the software products products that they produce and that they supply to their downstream consumers and so there was this question about should our taxonomy include such a text that do not have an impact on the integrity of, of their software products or not. Right now, the taxonomy as we designed it in the past doesn't. Um, yeah, and so that is maybe one of the questions. And another topic which I thought, or which we kept back then out of the scope again to be discussed whether to include is the impact that the consumption of compromised products had on the consumer, right? So whether, again, on the, the consumer, whether he's, I don't know, whether there are any secrets exfiltrated or whether there is a ransomware attack or denial of service, whatever, this is kind of the impact of what the malicious code does to the consumer, which is, uh, yeah, with, has, which has been kept aside, let's say, when we designed the taxonomy back in 2021. Anything to add, Jay, uh, Jonathan? Um, just just a few little bits. So so I think we've had a couple of meetings. So we, we had one with Justin and then a couple of follow-ups with Andy to go through it. And I think the whilst I had personally gone through the um, Incutel uh, repository of supply chain attacks, there's a, a GitHub repo uh, with a lot of data in there. 
Um, Andy went through, or I think he's still going through, uh, the CNCF repository. Mm -hmm. Now, I think there's quite a lot of commonality, and I think the Inkital data yeah. does reference some of that, but I think it's great we just have diff um, additional people going through it for a start because some of it is subjective, but also going through a different repository. I think that's valuable too. Um, I think there's a lot of commonality in the end leaf notes. So that looks reasonable, uh, mm. notwithstanding that the statement Henrik made that um, there's the question of scope and what you do or you don't include within that. The, the one thing that we're um, sort of going back and forwards on as a small group is uh, one thing that came to, came to light is, is kind of the lens that you're looking at that taxonomy through. Mm. Whereas the end nodes are relatively self-explanatory. You know, you stole the credentials, you did a bad thing. But when you try to aggregate them um, in the middle, and if you think about mm. it like the attack tree as it's built out in the risk explorer, the the taxonomy and the words that you use to describe those middle states could depend upon how you're looking at the taxonomy in general. Are you looking at it from a, an attacker's viewpoint to try and cause an attack? Or are you looking at it from a defender's point of view where you're trying to identify choke points to defend the infrastructure? And depending upon that lens, you may have slightly different groupings as you group those different endpoints. I thought that was quite interesting um, when Justin Kapos went through it from my perspective, because it, it did change some of my thinking around some of the middle middle nodes. Um, and that was still fair enough. That was just an observation from from that really, really useful conversation uh, that we've been having. And, and, and I think we're at a point now where these conversations about the taxonomy, we, sh we should, um, sort of upgrade that conversation into a, a wider conversation that we put perhaps on the um, the community calendar for other people to apply and, and contribute to. I think there's enough feedback coming in to suggest we're still uh, going to be refining and going through this work and it'd be great to get additional people's viewpoints. Um, is that reasonable, Henrik? I completely agree. It would be nice to have a regular meeting in, in the calendar and people interested to discuss, just join, yeah. Dan? Very good point. Um, just seems to me that <clears throat> to your what you were talking, I wasn't part of the discussion, so apologies, but um, if you're talking about the point of view, it does feel to me, well, we are in the end user working group, so we should be thinking about it from the end user point of view, as far as this group defines the term end user. And also, um, the, on the question of should the taxonomy include impacts that are not directly related to the delivery of the software product, but may, may have uh, resulted in loss of IP or, uh, or some other kind of problem for the organization, my initial kind of knee-jerk reaction is yes, because that's a key issue from, from, a, from an end user point of view. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, and don't, don't, don't you think so? Uh, sorry to to kind of I don't know. I, I know you probably you you don't necessarily want to litigate that question in here in this meeting right now. But it just just I just wanted to kind of like. No, I, I just thought um, like immediately like, yes, definitely. That should be part of the taxonomy. Yeah, no, I, I, and I agree and I disagree at the same time, if that is possible. <laughs> I agree that it's definitely an issue. If my software supplier, I don't know, goes down, there's, the systems are not available any longer, they cannot provide new versions, provide any bug fixes for whatever reasons, that of course is relevant, but it somehow opens this to a huge kind of availability discussion because there could also be all kind of, um, you know, physical, threats to the availability of that supplier and and so it opens up just an entire new topic while the initial scope was more really on the integrity of the products consumed and so we didn't want to go down the route of you know power cuts and whatever else threats could happen to the supplier so yes and no somehow <laughs> was at least the, the point that we took back then but but I'll second that, but Jacques, you, you got your hand up. 
Yeah, uh, my gut instinct is exactly the opposite. Um, keep it simple. Uh, the, the difficulty with uh, my first my first understanding of it was like impact on a defender who gets hit by one of these supply chain attacks, and that would be a no because everybody's impacts are different. We don't have omniscience. Last I checked. Um, but even then, like to Henrik's point, expanding the taxonomy to include quote unquote everything would make it unwieldy. Mm. Um, like I wanna keep it manageable. This is this is the problem with taxonomies that don't align with natural laws, because there are none in this case. Um, and it's like anything, you know, we have to accept a boundary to what risks we consider in and out of bounds. Um, like, for example, it's possible, not likely, not plausible, but possible that, you know, your data set it gets hit by a meteorite, but I don't think that should be in the taxonomy. Yeah. Right. So I, my, my instinct would be to say no to the degree possible. It was when we started to get into availability from the CIA triad right where it's like do we include that i know and if we do then it just explodes into you know all you know, meteor showers and all sorts of madness and that's what the difficulty but it, but it's still i think it's a valuable conversation to have right because yeah. I, I think that needs to be documented at what's in and out of scope and reasoned about um and i think we need different viewpoints to figure out as i was saying with a different lens if, if you're in charge of making sure that your supply chain is physically secure then you probably do want to know about that but um you might not be in the wider taxonomy so maybe there's an adjunct long short i think that there's a, a good conversation that we had here and i think we need to expand that um and uh yeah start putting meteorite hits into the taxonomy maybe <laughs> maybe not <laughs> Um, so, so I think as an action, we, we should, we should try and get a, 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 a date in the diary, a regular conversation going. Um, I think it's useful to go back to the TAC, uh, just to give some sort of progress update perhaps, because if you recall, we, we did present to the TAC as a, we should, we should adopt this from an OSSF perspective. And I think what it's kicked off is a longer conversation, which I think is, is great. Um, but I don't think it's something that we'd expect the TAC to sort of rubber stamp even if that is a thing right now um the, the other point that i was going to add was this is a completely open collaboration as, as they always are but um it, it's also linking with the cncf who whilst they don't have necessarily a taxonomy i don't believe they're they're having similar thoughts so it's trying to make sure that we bring people together have a common conversation about it very good so, so more to come on that that one. Uh, I'd, I'd recommend people uh, join that conversation because it was uh, it was really fascinating. Uh, the last couple of uh, sessions, um, some some good insights there. Um, next one up was the supply chain attack repository, um, or supply chain total, or whatever we're calling it these days. So, um, I took a, an action to set up. Uh, a meeting on that, I think it was last week uh, with uh, Jacques, uh, your great help uh, with the secure repositories team. We had a good turnout, I think it was sort of 10, 12 people um, um, to that initial conversation. Um, and I think that's another one where we probably do want a running uh, conversation to figure out where that goes. Uh, if I can provide a readout, readout of that, and maybe Jacques, you, you can uh, add in, but. Um, Definite interest in doing something along those lines. Uh, it didn't seem like in the open source arena, anything had particularly been attempted as yet, uh, but there was a lot of interest in collating the metadata, uh, perhaps binary, uh, as well as source code data as well for malicious supply chain attacks for subsequent analysis. Um, there was uh, a participant who had done some uh, research work uh, in, looking at different attacks and trying to piece them together, figuring out whether it was uh, could have been mitigated from salsa or uh, other approaches and try to map that. And her uh, feedback was this sort of database would have been invaluable. She's trying to make that happen. So it's, it's definitely something of interest. Next sort of steps would try to figure out what that would take, define a scope, define um, you know, what we'd actually build and come back together as a group again. 
Um, so I will be putting another um, meeting in the calendar to try and define that scope and try and you know, figure out how we were going to architect and build something like that. I had also subsequently, uh, straight after that call, was pinged by a couple of um, groups who stated they did have a database like this, but it was part of a, um, a venture. Exactly right. It was. It was. Um, it, they weren't selling it, to be clear, right? But it was just a statement that they do have that data, and at least one of them was interested in figuring out how they could open it up for others to access. Um, so, good news, I think, for me is that someone is collecting that data. Jack, I'd, I'd add the slight color, slight color to the 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 vendor question, because um, there were folks there who described um, what was it that there was some data sharing group of vendors. I can't remember the name. Oh yeah. I, I wasn't referring to that one, but you're right. There was that one. Right. Um, but, but by analogy, you know, like a, a clearing house that vendors could also contribute as well as researchers and yeah. package repositories, receiving reports, that sort of thing. And the asterisk that sort of hovered over the top of it was that we would want the Linux foundation lawyers to clear us on antitrust questions. Um, and but that was that was really like more of a technicality, I think, more than like a fatal hurdle, since these things already exist in other yeah. other areas. That was a great point. I, I I don't recall what that was called, but it'll be somewhere in the notes. Yeah, yeah. Those people, that mob, that lot. I had an industry thing. Yep, that's exactly right. Um, so, so long and short, look, I, I think that's another uh, project that we've talked about here. We've talked about getting people together and figuring out how to do it. We've definitely got a, a signal from other groups that are interested in it. Some of them potentially have a vendor product that has this as a side effect of what they're building. So worth continued uh, pressure to see if we can get something like this stood up. So another action is bring that up as a working group meeting and uh, we'll distribute that accordingly. But uh, it, it did seem like there was prior art there that uh, perhaps could be influenced to open up for appropriate researchers. Um, it was mentioned as well, the um, access management to make sure it's not available. Uh, you know, obviously it's malicious software, so we need to be somewhat careful about that. Yeah, that was, to me, that was the thing that sort of set off the little, little spidey sense about antitrust was that it would be a closed data set and you would have to apply for access. And so it's just like, you've got to, frame it carefully so that it doesn't seem like a a, a trust arrangement um you know excluding people unfairly blah 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 so can you tell i used to study law <laughs> keeping it safe no it's uh, exactly right fantastic all right very good thank you uh anything else anyone wants to add about the taxonomy the supply chain work that's going on otherwise we'll go to the next one there are specific open data licenses that um, that's, that's a point that I just wanted to throw in there. So uh, if we're talking about data, um, um, I know that from working in the open data community that uh, there are open, like Open Data Institute, I don't know if you've ever come across Open Data Institute, Jonathan, but um, they, uh, they, have, they have a lot of ideas about how data should be shared differently from um, open source. So uh, we might want to look at promoting the use of an open data license. I don't know quite what open SSFs or Linux Foundation's views on that are. I think it's a good one to find out. I, I, I don't think we're at a stage just to actually switch this on and all of a sudden the only problem we have is I am. I think we're a long way away from that, but I, but I think it's definitely something we need to have in the conversation now but for the points that Jacques and you were raising, right? Fantastic. All right, very good. Um, so moving on to uh, any notes from working groups. So uh, we have one about diagrams, uh, but I think it'd be worthwhile digging into that a little bit. Is there any other working groups people want to share before we dig into the diagram one? If not, we'll just go straight there. No, all good. Grobe, floor is yours. All right. Well, thank you, Jonathan. 
I have uh, put together a short presentation I've been sharing with a couple groups. Uh, can you see my screen? <laughs> yes, yes, we can. It's quite Excellent. graphic. So there is a group of us that get together uh, called the uh, Diagrammer Society. And we're trying to figure out the problem of how to describe what the OpenSSF is, what we do, and try to get people to uh, participate more. Uh, kind of our objective and whatnot is to simply provide examples of how we're organized, what challenges our working groups and SIGs are seeking to solve, and how those components relate to each other. So we've thrown together multiple views of how we think the foundation uh, could be shared. And I would love to get this group's feedback since uh, this represents the kind of consumer of open source community to see if anything here is particularly interesting to that perspective that we would want to uh, further develop and uh, get professional artists to do whatnot and have hyperlinks. Uh, the first way we documented the foundation was a hierarchy view. At the top is the governing board, and then below that is the TAC, and then we have the working groups. Um, so a diagram like this, uh, yes. Yeah, it, it already is in the minutes, Dan. Um, very simple diagram. Anyone that works at a company can understand kind of what this is, and it basically speaks to where people live in the hierarchy and all of these things. So you could hyperlink off and dive into the end users working group and jump right to the readme and see what awesome projects they're working on or have a second level diagram that shows a listing of the projects. So this is one style of view. And all these diagrams, uh, not only are in this presentation, they're up in our GitHub repository. Uh, let's see here, do I put that there? There we go. So if anyone's curious, you can go there and actually look at the diagrams and kind of read our one issue that has the Uber diagram in it. Uh, the next view I lovingly call the bubbles universe. So we picked a object type, a circle to represent working groups. We picked the squares to represent uh, projects and initiatives, uh, hexagons to represent SIGs, and um, basically started to dive into, this is the different work areas of the foundation. These are the projects they're working on. And um, if this style diagram was interesting, we could move, we could put the end users group in the middle because you know the end users are obviously the center of the universe and show it kind of align things uh, where there's affinity. So the uh, supply chain integrity working group might work a lot with the security tooling working group. So we might cluster those uh, types of work together. So that's another style of diagram we could use. Uh, the next one that actually got uh, pretty good feedback from the few governing board folks we've shown this to is laying the foundation over top of a process like a CICD pipeline. And uh, David Wheeler uh, put this particular diagram together where he had a very simple CICD pipeline and then started to plot uh, where the different uh, working groups and projects uh, were relevant to those particular areas. I took inspiration from that and took a standard SDLC uh, Ouroboros uh, circle, and I plotted roughly where the working groups could land. And then again, as um, if we like this style diagram, as the viewer was looking at it, as you hovered over the vulnerability disclosures working group, theoretically, you could have this bubble blow up and show more detail. Uh, yeah, and just so everyone knows, these are all kind of a snapshot in time view of things. These are not 100% accurate. And if a particular style of diagram was desired, we would wanna work with the individual working groups to make sure they agreed. Like, yes, we think identifying security threats is part of operations and maintenance phase of SDLC, for example. And then um, a last step, any diagrams we do would have to go through uh, usability and accessibility review, because while I, I enjoy colors, uh, we have people that are colorblind and the colors might all look the same to them. So we want to make sure we have some distinguishing uh, way to distinguish that for different viewing communities. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. 
another style which my uh, diagramming tools completely failed me on is a DevSecOps Infinity Loop. So everyone's seen the DevSecOps Infinity Loop with the seven uh, area, seven phases of DevSecOpsing. And a technique you can use is called racetrack, where you can take arrows laying over top of that infinity sign and show where they're relevant to the different phases. So for example, uh, we feel that the best practices working group is relevant to all phases of DevSecOps, whereas uh, the vulnerability disclosures working group is really only relevant to release, configure, and monitor, for example. And uh, so that's a style. And again, the tool failed me. I couldn't actually get that to wrap a circle over top of an infinity loop. So that's kind of still in progress. Another view, which um, our friend Matt put together is a mind map. And this one is actually, uh, I think, very useful from a tactical level. And if anyone's interested in actually seeing the diagram, uh, you can go to issue one. You need to download a mind map tool to be able to get uh, the ability to zoom in. But basically, Matt sat down, took an inventory of the foundation, went to every working group's readme file, which is why the readme files are so important, and uh, kind of read what the current group activities were. And he started to categorize it. And he has a color coding system here. And then another friend of ours, Arnaud, kind of um, took this base and refined it a little bit. Um, but basically the styles, we could have a mind map. And this is a style diagram I'm recommending for the TAC to use as we start to go through the working group reviews to make sure we don't have duplicative effort across the working groups and SIGs, and to also make sure that everybody's kind of aligning to the TAC overall vision and goals. But that's a style with which to present information. It's very dense. And as you can see, very tiny on my picture. Another style of view is focusing in on a persona. So as an open source developer, I want to write more secure code. Well, if I want to do that, go talk to the best practices group. If you want to be able to scan your code, well, you know, the tooling group has some pretty cool stuff. And then we also have scorecards and all-star another way. So basically we could agree upon a, a group of personas, talk about what user stories we're trying to exemplify, and then, uh, map out you know, where elements of the foundation are applicable to that particular story or journey. Another diagram is the TAC is uh, working on revising the foundation's vision. So you could take the four pillars of the vision like we did here and start to line up where all the work in the foundation kind of filters down what's applicable. So you know, we want to be an influential advocate for efforts that are aligned with our mission. So we think the end user working group, the public policy group, and the governance subcommittee kind of line up to that activity. So again, we can kind of line up to a vision or mission statement. Uh, this one I just did, I call it the uh, stickers uh, view. This is if anyone's familiar with uh, American NASCAR racing where the cars will have a bunch of stickers slapped on the side for their sponsors. So basically I picked three categories, plan, build, and run. And I sat down and kind of lined up each of the working groups and their associated uh, projects and initiatives or SIGs and kind of shoved it into the plan, build, run categories. And we would want to have badges or stickers that users could click on, hey, what's All-Star? Boop, and be popped right over to that repo. And then um, like you'll see that the CNCF landscape, uh, the continuous delivery landscape does something similar to this. So again, we just, we need to decide what categories we want. <laughs> Thank you, Shock. <laughs> yes. Um, and then one I didn't get to is a trail map. So if anyone's seen the CNCF trail map, it's a very simple graphic and uses the metaphor of a map somebody's going on a journey. And while that doesn't showcase everything the CNCF does, it shows the high points, the most common things along the journey, and you can click on it and dive, be, you know, put right to those uh, potential uh, areas you're interested in. So as I mentioned, uh, yeah, as we're circulating this around, trying to get feedback, you know, is, is this interesting? Is this, do we, anyone feel this is useful work? Should we continue doing it and refine anything? Um, were any of the pictures particularly interesting? Did they spark joy and excitement? Did you want to learn more or have it refined? Um, 
you know, what areas would we like to try to focus this group on the diagrammers to help explain and get documentation out for people. And uh, ultimately we would like to have um, whatever diagrams we feel there's gonna be a couple different views that are the finalists. We would probably wanna work with professional graphic designers to get it cleaned up because, you know, I'm just an artist in my spare time. Uh, and it's in my job has nothing to do with open source, even though I love drawing pictures all day, but we want to get a professional to make it look nice. And then it all, as I mentioned, we want to make sure we have everything vetted by accessibility and usability uh, people to get those perspectives put in. So we, we have diagrams that are viewable by the most amount of different uh, constituents. So that's my spiel. Did anyone have any questions? Is there any feedback aside from needing more circles? It's all about circles and boxes, man. That's security architecture, circles and boxes. You have some sense of which audiences will go to which diagrams? Uh, well, the governing board people loved the hierarchy view, which I feel from a, a user standpoint or trying to uh, evangelize or encourage more participation is the least useful. Yeah, nobody cares. GB loved that one. Uh, okay. Uh, Bob uh, from the TAC, he and I like the persona view, and I think that's something we're going to pursue regardless of what the GB decides. But I think that's useful to have a user story and actually have some simple ways for people to jump on. Um, and then uh, slide eight, which was slide eight. Uh, the CICD one was also pretty popular. Jonathan. Yeah, I, I think, first of all, I think this is really good work, right? Because I think a picture paints a thousand words and all that. And I think it is a great way of bringing more definition to the work we're doing at the OSSF and bringing other people in and, and getting them to locate what's the, the best value to them. I, th I think the the one thing I, I, I'd love to see, and it's completely down to me to raise a pull request and get off my backside and do it, uh, is like the, maybe it's, partial CICD or partial persona view, but it's kind of showing a threat model of given an architecture, this is actually where the different working groups fit. And this is where the different um, projects fit, or this is where Salsa fits or scorecard or whatever, just so that new end users can come, come to the table and say, think, look, that's where I think I've got a problem. Now I clearly know that that's a problem. That's a way of, of mitigating or where to go to help. And, and and totally down to me to go and help and add it and put it in. But but I think maybe it's somewhere between already the, the good work that's in there and the CICD and the um, persona view. So, so more power to you, keep going and I'll help if and how I can. Thank you. Robert. Uh, yeah, uh, just a quick question. Is is the idea of like, are we supposed to choose one or a couple or like? Uh, being that I drew every single one of these except three of them, I would appreciate having uh, more focus on what people found useful as mm -hmm. opposed to trying to manage like 20 diagrams. <laughs> so if we had a couple that were useful, we could again, explore and get more up to date. We'd like to show like project maturity or where things are incubating. I think that's another interesting aspect we could share in a diagram. Um, but yeah, if you, if you had feedback, I like one, five and 12, that would be more uh, beneficial to my time. Yeah, I think I think uh, like if you look at, for instance, like the CNCF landscape, there there are several ways of sorting, and like you, you press a couple of buttons and everything changes to to something. There are some of these that I find more appealing from, uh, like for instance, like the, I like the bubbles one. Uh, uh, the bubbles are cool, not just because I got ADHD, but you know bubbles uh and, and uh, even though i made fun of it the the sdlc view like as a concept having that kind of like circle and you can like pinpoint and go into it and you can especially when, it, when considering like the uh, the borderline <laughs> the, the borderline categories so to speak mm -hmm. where uh like having a good way of splitting that up not only by color but obviously 
you know, in other ways, so people uh, that can't see color make. Uh, <laughs> I say yes. Yeah, and yeah. I, I don't, chose don't the stare into the picture <laughs> just to show yeah. that there are some that cross the borders. Mm. Uh, obviously, we would want to have a, a professional designer pick better colors. <laughs> It's in my mind like the bubbles one. Like if you had an alternative view, which was the SDLC, they would have the same content, so to speak. Yes. Yes. And if you could kind of like toggle between those two, depending on how you want to look at it and how you want to process it, and it, and again at the same time you have the the persona uh, view. Like if you're trying to figure out where to go, that would make it easier. But at the same time, like, like you can't like choose choose everyone. <laughs> like we want we don't want them all. Uh, so, yeah, the original question was really like, how are we, are we, can we choose a couple? Like, could we mm -hmm. vote for yes. having a couple of them in and mm -hmm. make Absolutely. spend time making that work somehow? <laughs> Not us, I guess. Well, and, and as um, this is, the, the group is open. So if someone had other ideas, whether they wanted to scribble on a bar napkin or just write an issue saying, why don't you have a diagram that represents this? Mm -hmm. um, that would be um, useful feedback too, but I, I do appreciate that the, the suggestion. I like I like I prefer the SDLC and the bubbles myself, just being an AppSec guy. Mm. Yep. But if anyone has any further suggestions, don't hesitate to you know file an issue or a PR in the repo. All, all the diagrams except the stickers are up there. I'm going to get the stickers up later today. Um, so you can actually look at it and kind of zoom in and monkey around with it if you desire. And source files can be shared if someone wanted to take this and run with it to, with a different direction, different colors, whatever. Grub, do you want to do a plug for the, the timing on that meeting? Uh, sure. Right now, the Diagrammer Society meets every other Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern. And that's because I had uh, so little feedback from the group about what the best time was. And I didn't have, I had one person from Europe uh, state they wanted to participate. So that's why we ended up with kind of a, a US centric time. But if we had people from Europe or APAC or wherever um, that wanted to participate, we're definitely open to reconsidering moving that. But our next meeting will be next Thursday at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern. And all, all, like all the OpenSSF stuff, the calls are recorded. If you want to hear what we've talked about or gone through, please don't watch the video. Very cool. Thank okay. you, Krupp. Yeah, Thank you for your time and attention. If you have any feedback, let me know. Well, I, I think the logo that you've got for the group is one of the best I've seen. That's, that's phenomenal. So uh, thank you. Very impressed with that. Maybe we need one as well, but it, it, it will pale in comparison compared to, that, compared to that one. Well, do you give me some suggestions of how you would like to see the goose uh, staged and dressed? And I'll be glad to scribble that up for you. Very cool. I feel like a, a, a goose surrounded by giant stacks of paper, <laughs> sort of like leaning over it with its head in its hand. <laughs> being pummeled with malicious code and vulnerabilities right. is that where we're right. at yeah. Yeah. <laughs> very cool that paints a picture uh very good um all right any any other business any anything anyone would like to raise hey jonathan i just want to offer You're a up. hand this is uh rob underwood uh for some folks who i know some folks on the phone i was the uh leader of the open source program office at goldman sachs until being laid off a couple weeks ago um so if uh if there's anything I can do to help, I know Jonathan pretty well, a few of the folks who are in the capital markets industry, but happy to roll my sleeves and help. This, I think, is an important initiative. Um, love the fact that you're building some connectivity. Um, I think there's a lot of connect connectivity that can be built, especially with some of the initiatives that are happening in capital markets and financial services. So um, I'm ready, willing, and able to take up GitHub issues, write docs, whatever y'all need to have for help. So let me know. Excellent. That will be sent through in very short order. Thanks for the offer, Rob. That's brilliant. We no appreciate problem, it. Jonathan. Good Happy to have you in the group. Great. Excellent. Um, okay. W w one other topic I, I was going to raise was just sort of changing the or suggesting changing the meeting around a little bit. Um, you know, we've now got to the point where we've got a couple of little working groups going on or extra meetings that we're having uh, 
uh, alongside this. I just wonder if it would be useful to bring some of that content into this call because um, we, we sort of segued a little bit into like an update of what we're doing elsewhere outside of the meeting. And it just kind of occurs to me that a lot of people we want to uh, have together are actually in this call anyway. So we can have the extra meeting to, to put some additional power behind it, but it might make sense to actually have some of that conversation directly here rather than just a bit of an update. I just something that uh, occurred to me, I got a bit of advice on that uh, last week. Any, any thoughts? Thumb, 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 three or four thumbs. All right, let's do that then. So I think going forward, we will set this these different meetings up because I think it gives people uh, ability to, to to add additional work into it. I think it's more, unfortunately, going to take more than one hour. But I'll make sure that when we put this agenda together going forward, it, it won't just be the updates from those groups. It'll be active sessions too. I think that's great. All right. Very good. Thanks very much, everyone. Well, thanks for your time. Thanks for attending and uh, have a great couple of weeks and we'll see you back uh, soon, right? Thanks very much. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Oh, Jonathan. Hello. Uh, it's Dan. I was just wondering, hey, are you are you heading to the, uh, are you aware of the State of Open Conference that's happening next week? The uh, um, In Tuesday yes. Monday, yep. Monday. Yeah, I intend to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Great. I will hope to see you there. Then, Mike. Oh, fantastic. We'll see you there. All right. Cheers. In person. Bye. All right. Great. Thanks, mate. <laughs> see you next week. Yeah. Cheers. Bye.